Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Hairi Fazli. Uh, today I will be presenting a review of hierarchical culture in Malaysian public service. This is regard for subject ADS 656 seminar in public management which prepared for Sir Mujibu bin Abdul Muiz. We move to the executive summary. What is the meaning of hierarchy? Hierarchy is a fundamental element of international politics. Hierarchy is an existing clarification recognized that there are several possible relationships between the employees. The purpose of these studies is to examine the consequences of recent changes in hierarchical culture in public management in Malaysia with connection to modern public management and organizational performance and service provisions. The problem in Malaysian public service organizations often develop from employee conduct and working relationships that impact service delivery. Therefore, this study aims to investigate the influence of mutual respect between leaders and subordinates regarding workplace relationships in the public sector and how it affects performance and execution of service. Next, uh, we move uh, to the introductions. We take uh, the quotes from Mary Christian Seng. First, be humble and then adjust. To live and work well in the highly hierarchical organization, it is essential to understand one's position in the company as well as the society at large. Mary started her career as a cultural competencies consultant in 1996. She spent the last 25 years in eight different countries, including Europe, Singapore, and Malaysia. We move to the introductions. Malaysian public service are the backbones of the Malaysian government with roles from policy making and policy implementation to monitoring law enforcement. Public service officers are under pressure to find efficient methods to deliver services due to a frequent changes in the elected officials. However, the World Bank found the most reform did not improve public service delivery. Malaysia reform tried to improve public service initiative, implemented a top-down method and neglecting the cause of the service delivery problems. According to the World Bank Economic Report in 2019, suggested that Malaysia government reform need to improve human capital to accelerate productivity growth and improve service delivery. Human capital can be interpreted as individuals with knowledge, experience and training in organizations. In public service, knowledge-based organizations can be considered intangible assets that are more appreciated than tangible. Human capital and employees are important to achieving an effective delivery system in the Malaysian public service. The scheme of grades, Malaysian public service practice the divisional organizational structure with multiple layers of employees positions. The layers of employees create multiple levels of leaders and subordinate relationships. The leaders and subordinates relationships and attitude in the workplace are crucial, re reflecting their psychological and physical state towards work and commitment to the organizations. Leadership, behavior, personality and difficulties have been identified as a factor influencing the performance of public service delivery in Malaysia. In addition, the most critical leadership quality and workplace performance factor is respect. Respect is an at attitude, an emotion or combination of behaviors and action that one takes towards another person. To a certain point, leaders and subordinates show respect one another if they are aware of their responsibility and membership within their organizations. Therefore, collaboration, awareness and respectful attitude between leaders and subordinates may have an effect on organizational objective. Next, we move to the problem statements. Human relationships are often characterized by mutual appreciation in a society based on the fundamental standard of equality, freedom, and dignity. Respect is essential in many corporations and governments, from encouraging variety of openness. Respect is also connected with interpersonal and organizational behavior in the workplace, such as employee satisfactions, social responsibility, and organizational commitment. In common, Individually are usually happy 
viewing respect to others, either on how it is given to others or how others respect others. They really examine respect from both perspectives. Mutuality involves a perception of shared interest between several connections of individuals although they may also have other possibly changing interests. Mutuality exists where both leader and subordinate agree with their commitments to achieving the organization's objective. In 2019, Malaysian Public Service received an increasing number of complaints from the public. As reported by the Public Complaints Bureau, from 6,387 in 2018, to 8,992, this criticism concerned the inconsistency and lack of effectiveness in delivering governmental service. It proved that incompetence in Malaysian public service delivery is still a crucial problem, including unethical behavior, corruption, and unprofessionalism among the possible reasons. Organizational management failures emerge when cooperating parties such as leaders and subordinates have divergent view and behaviors. Therefore, the relationship between leaders and subordinates is crucial to Malaysian public service performance. Next, we move to the literature review. Firstly is the mutual respect. Respect is one of the most highly valued attributes among employees in an organization, even more than money and career prospects. Respect may develop from the situation where people are motivated by not just what action from others to them but also by what others think about them. For example, respect may be demonstrated by applauding an employee efforts to develop trust with that person. Therefore, there are two types of respect which are recognition respect and appraisal respect. Recognition of respect is when individual has the right to take others seriously and effectively consider what they reflect on what to do, which is bound by their behavior and moral duties. While appraisal respect is the high regard for someone having the merit of quality or position having no idea of that person's behavior. Respect is multidimensional because it is associated with different leadership outcomes. The concept of multidimensionality in respect can be seen in the different scope of recognition and appraisal respect. Next is the leader and subordinate relationships. The relationship between leader and subordinate is perhaps characterized as a relational and didactic process in which both leader and subordinate acquire roles and expectations. The finest Connection between a leader and subordinate frequently result in increased level of satisfaction, effectiveness, and mutual influence. Meanwhile, a low quality relationship result in dissatisfaction and restricted information. Administrative and professional management, including officers within the scheme of grade 41 until 54. Meanwhile, the support management comprised from clerk. Uh, driver and other administrative posts with a scheme grade from 19 to 40. Next is the mutual respect and leader and subordinate relationships. Respect has been identified as a relationship behavior rather than the personal attribute. Therefore, respect should be evaluated at the didactic level as opposed towards the individual level. In this context, the didactic level is the difference between individual leader and subordinate levels rather than within groups of leaders and subordinates. Team performance outcomes may be improved if members feel respected and within a positive team atmosphere. A strong relationship between leaders and subordinates is defined by motivational relationship highlighted by trust, mutual respect and responsibility. Next, we move to the theoretical framework. First is social identity theory. Tajfel and Turner in 1986 published the social theory of intergroup behavior. The social identity theory concerns the perceived fit between groups. The fundamental objective of social identity theory is that how a person identifies themselves with a specific community affects their behavior regarding socialization. Social identity theories 
consists of three mental process individuals sense to make in group classifications. The first process is the social categorization. It is the process by which we organize individuals into social groups to understanding our social world. This process enables to define people, including ourselves, based on the groups to which we belong. The second process is the social identification. It is the process of which identifying as a group members. Socially identifying with a group leads individuals to behave in the way that they believe members of that group should behave. The third process is the social comparison. It is the process by which people compare their groups with other groups in terms of prestige and social standing. For example, a movie star might judge himself in comparison to a reality TV show star. However, he may see himself as having a lower social standing in comparison to a famous uh, train actor. Next is the second uh, theoretical framework, which is the social exchange theory. Social exchange theory refers to the action taken by both leader and subordinates to meet one another expectation is in positively related to exchange quality. Social exchange theory has been used to describe the concept and quality of leader and subordinate relationships. Under social exchange theory, the underlying perspective is that exchange are based on actions by two parties where each of them may initiate and return exchange. Leader will respond to those subordinates with whom they have relationship their value. Leaders and subordinates involved in the social exchange anticipate not just one time but long term gains such as stable wage payout and pleasant working atmosphere. The relationship between leaders and subordinate viewpoints of social exchange theory claims that the leader has greater control over the relationship's exchange quality. Leader qualities or conduct are crucial in influencing subordinates' motivation to accept a high-quality transaction within a relationship. Next, we move to the conclusions. Respect is one of the core characteristics of human behavior, and this paper describes how the different parties in the workplace identify it. Mutual respect is the element that affects leader and subordinates when treated with fairness or because of their position. In considering respect, this paper argues that mutuality has a significant and central role in the leaders and subordinate relationships. Subordinates' actions and outcome can be further narrowed down to how they embrace the different kind of respect for their leaders. For example, the type of respect shown influence how the subordinate respond and accept instruction without their willingness or feeling intimidated. Therefore, subordinates are willing to fully commit to their job scope by having leaders who care for their subordinates' welfare. That is all from me. Thank you.